Now, even if we're happy with the way that the 20, the, the 2021, 22 season concluded, that was only one season. Now the trick is that we have to come back next year and the team has to do this again. And so that means that there's a few problems, there's, there's a few, there, there's a few challenges that have to be addressed here in the off season. It sounds like the team is well on the way to re-signing Dave Manson and Jay Woodcroft as the coaching duo for next season. That's, that's a fantastic move. You know, Jay Woodcroft, he definitely did, you know, he definitely did exceed my, exceed my expectations as the head coach of the Edmonton Oilers. But even beyond that, that's just job one. Now that once that's done, then the real work begins. Now Ken Holland has to look at re-signing the rest of the roster. And that's going to be a little bit of a challenge. And if you want an example of that, you really you'd have to look no further than our three big free agents at, at, at forward. So Evander Kane, he was signed to a one-year deal this year, you know, at mid-season. And now, so basically that's up. And he had a fantastic season. He, if he had played a full season, this would have been at least a 40-goal season for him. So he's definitely going to get a raise on what the Edmonton Oilers were paying him last year. But beyond that, there's three more players that have to be re-signed. Ryan McLeod is an absolute must. There's no two ways about that. They must, they must find a way to re-sign Ryan McLeod you know, to a reasonably termed deal with the amount of salary cap space that they have. And I believe the last time that I looked, it looked as if the Edmonton Oilers projected salary cap space was about $8 million. It was about $8 million, maybe less. So this is not going to be an easy thing to do. In one way or the other, we are going to be saying goodbye to some players. That's very unfortunate. I don't like to do it with this team. But unfortunately, it looks like one way or the other, it's going to have to happen. And so with that idea in mind that we are going to be saying goodbye to a player, that brings us back to our next two restricted free agents. So that brings us to Kyler Yamamoto and Jesse Pugliarvi. So unfortunately, it seems like there are a lot of Edmonton Oilers fans that are very down on Jesse Pugliarvi after that playoff series last year. In fact, his second half of the season last year, yeah, unfortunately, I would say that it probably wasn't what it could have been. But he's still a young player, and he's still, you know, a young player is still going to be prone to falling into slumps ever so often. And he's definitely not the only player in this team that has had portions of this season that were not what they could have been. The other one being Kyler Yamamoto. Now, there are a lot of people out there who would say that Jesse Pugliarvi has probably struggled in the NHL more than he hasn't. I don't see it that way. Now, personally, in my opinion, I think that Kyler Yamamoto has struggled to find his place in the NHL more often than he hasn't. Doesn't mean that I don't like the player. I like the player very much. I like Kyler as a player very much. Now, on the other hand, there's a lot of people that would say that about Jesse. But as we kind of approach this narrative that the, the Oilers have to choose between these two players, the question is going to become then, which one do you choose? And in my personal opinion, I think that the player to be chosen here is Jesse Pugliarvi. You know, that's not a, I, I don't think that's a popular sentiment by any means. But the difference in these two players basically comes down to two things. In the case of Kyler Yamamoto, he is an absolutely relentless forechecker. He is just voracious after that puck, and he doesn't quit. You know, he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't quit challenging for that puck. Yet yeah, that's a great, that's, that's a great thing to have on your top six, on your top six lines. You definitely, you need a strong four checker on those lines. Especially considering that it's, it, you know, it's nece not necessarily uncustomary for a top six player to refrain away from four checking. Now the most famous example of that would probably be Pavel Bure. I mean, Pavel Bure, he was an absolutely amazing offensive player, but for the life of that guy, he absolutely despised four checking. You couldn't get him to do it. 
So if you've got a player on your top six who seems to love forechecking as much as Kyler Yamamoto does, yeah, that's a great thing to have there. But Jesse Pugliarvi brings something to the table that actually can't be as readily replaced as that. And that is potentially elite two-way play. You have to kind of look at some of the advanced stats in order to actually find this. But Jesse Pugliarvi is probably one of the best defensive... He's probably one of the best defensive wingers in the league already. And he's still a pretty young player. He's only actually going to get better. An elite two-way forward is not something that you can easily replace in the NHL. As a matter of fact, they are much harder to come by. They are much harder to come by than, for, than, than strong forechecking players. How replaceable was Chris Draper? How replaceable was Yuri Lettinen? How replaceable was Essa Tikkanen? In any one of those cases, the answer was <laughs> absolutely not very. As a matter of fact, not replaceable at all. Now, on the other hand, with Kyler Yamamoto, I mean, he's basically supposed to be a very high-skilled forechecking player. And the Edmonton Oilers already have a player that's ready to slot into that role should they trade Kyler Yamamoto. That player being Dylan Holloway. So Jesse Pugliarvi is not a player that can be quickly replaced. But as much as I, as much as I love and admire Kyler Yamamoto... As much as I would love to see him be an oiler until the rest of until the end of time, it does it does look like Kyler Yamamoto is a good deal more replaceable with the assets that the Edmonton Oilers have right now than is Jesse Pugliarvi. So whatever happens with Evander Kane, happens with Evander Kane. It almost seems like maybe the best strategy is to try to sign Evander Kane right off the bat. And then once you've got him signed, it gives you an indication of how much cap space you have to re-sign the rest of those players. And keep in mind that once UFA, you know, once free agency opens, Evander Kane, he can go anywhere that he wants to. Ryan McLeod, Gesse Pogliarvi, and Kyler Yamamoto, they, you know, they, the Edmonton Oilers hold their rights. They do have to basically, you know, they do have to negotiate with Edmonton. Edmonton would have the right to uh, to match any play any other team that might try to sign them, although you know offer sheets don't really happen that often in the NHL. In any case, to even have any shot of making this work, you know, whatsoever, you know they are counting on a few other things to uh, to happen. They're going to have to make some other hard choices. I mean, Duncan Keith, should he decide to retire, would be very helpful with the salary cap situation. You know, Mike Smith, similarly, would give them a little bit of relief, but then they have to worry about going out and finding another goalie to, uh, to work with or maybe even mentor Stuart Skinner next year. And then, of course, there is the, uh, the player that everybody seems to love to want to trade, Tyson Berry. And as much as I personally don't want to see Tyson Berry leave the Oilers, I do think that it is, it is possible that that might be a necessity. It's a similar situation to Kyler Yamamoto, where the Oilers do seem to have a player that's ready to step into that, uh, you know, step into that void that uh, that Tyson Berry would leave. That player being Evan Bouchard. And so right then and there, there's another player that I think it's, well, it's possible, even likely, that we might have to say goodbye to this off season, you know, even if we don't want to. But as much as a lot of fans might have trouble appreciating him. Yes, a Paul Yarvi is definitely another player that we do not want to say goodbye to. And I think that he is the absolute last player that we should want to say goodbye to. So if we're choosing between Kyler Yamamoto and Yes, a Paul Yarvi, you know, like I said before, you know, I, I love and respect and admire Kyler. I would love to see him be an oiler forever. But I, I do think that he is the one that I would that I would move in order to make all of this possible.